Initiating emergency nanotrite activation. Three, two, one. Nanotrite sequencer online. Rage's developer, id Software, has ever been on the forefront of technological innovation. They have developed and launched the first games to define the first-person shooter genre, coined the term deathmatch, and with the release of Doom 3, launched the game engine that made heavy use of specular highlighting and bump mapping, two features that have catapulted video game graphics to new heights. Fast forward several years later and Rage got released. Did Carmack and company manage to impress the industry once again? This review discusses the aspects that make Rage an above-average game and the flaws that pull it down from joining the elite ranks of its id Software forebears. Rage tells the story of an Earth ravaged by an asteroid impact. The game's onset, you emerge from an arc, one of the scores of massive underground metal spheres that were designed to protect mankind's elite. The plan was to preserve scientists, leaders, and military personnel in numerous arcs and then rebuild civilization several years after the asteroid hits the planet. Unfortunately, something goes wrong and the timing of your arc goes haywire. You emerge several years late in the rest of humanity's remnants. Upon stumbling out, you immediately get ambushed by bandits but get rescued by the head of a nearby settlement. From there, you embark on a series of quests that pit you against bandits, mutants, and bands of hostile settlers. Welcome to the future. What bothered me initially was the infamous Rage Texture streaming pop-in bug. Every time you abruptly turn around, you will notice the game trying to catch up with you. Textures will pop in belatedly. While I have solved this, this does present problems. Another thing that bothers me to this day is how the game is structured. Rage sets you off on a string of missions that, that never fully captivates the player. Rage just doesn't draw the player in to care about the world this PC game is set in. This dearth of compelling reasons why you should throw your lot in with the quest-giving NPCs leaves the game's plot uninteresting. So here's what I need you to do. Head to where those bandits live and wipe them out, plain and simple. No one walks out alive, except you. And then there are choices. When NPCs give you a quest, you're gonna need to go down to their hideout near the old dam and find what you need. Think you are given the choice to accept or decline. This is just an illusion of freedom. In reality, choosing decline does not divert the plot into another story arc. You're just effectively putting that quest on hold. Some of them you can take later, but some need to be accepted and completed before the game can progress. Rage is not an RPG PC game. Now this is not saying that Rage is a bad game, far from it. It has flaws, but it is as immersive as the best ones out there. The gameplay in Rage is a breath of fresh air from all the games that have copied Halo's 2 weapon inventory system. While I still prefer the latter, I was pleasantly surprised that id Software has stuck with the old school tradition of letting you carry a whole arsenal with you. And what an arsenal it is. In the course of the game, you'll acquire a bevy of weapons including a pistol, a shotgun, a couple of assault rifles, a crossbow, a sniper rifle, and a rocket launcher. It's gratifying to fire these, unlike in Doom 3 where most of the conventional weapon sound effects lean towards the higher frequencies, the weapons in Rage sound just right, massive and powerful, without going overboard. What ups the ante in the weapons department is the ammunition system of the game, which makes the firearms veritable Swiss knives. Running low on rockets? Craft pop rocket ammunition for your shotgun. Ran out sniper rounds, whip out your pistol, load it up with armor piercing fat mama rounds and use a makeshift scope to take out targets from afar. It's this system that makes rage fun to play. Even your other items can be upgraded or converted with the recipes you can buy from merchants. And yes, there's a limited crafting system involved. Objects that can be picked up pepper the game. Recipes range from straightforward ones like the aforementioned Pop Rockets and Fat Mamas, while quite a few are situational. While the range of recipes in Rage isn't as numerous as that found in MMOs, crafting is one of Rage's numerous aspects that instill diversity 
in what would have otherwise been a purely linear shooter. Id Software really made an effort in diversifying Rage gameplay. As most probably know by now, it features vehicular combat. Players can take part in various races that provide three types of games, time trials, races, and rallies. Racing prizes come in the form of racing certificates, a form of currency that can only be used to buy car upgrades. Upgrades come in the form of armor, traction, shock absorbers, engines, and ramming grills. The upgrade system is not extensive, but it's still enjoyable upgrading your ride. Players who are worried that purchases might slow down the game need not worry. Rage does provide opportunities to make easy money while well in the confines of friendly towns. Players can engage in three types of game, dice rolling, five finger fillet, and a card game that strongly mimics the mechanics of the now defunct Facebook game Warstorm. The card game is by no means as complicated and as engaging as Magic the Gathering, but it's far from bad either. When it comes to audio, there's nothing to write home about really. Rage's audio effects are impressive, but they don't push the bar. Water drops are soothing to hear when you're in subterranean levels, while at the same time reinforcing the feeling that you're far away from the safe confines of civilized parts. Bullets clang against armor. Centerbots sound like what they appear to be, a combination of salvaged high-tech components and rusty gears and plates of metal. Where visuals are concerned, this first-person shooter is one impressive powerhouse. Rage's story unfolds in a region wherein the terrain is dominated by sheer canyon walls, sun-scorched valleys, and serpentine desert paths. The id Tech 5 game engine delivers this desolate atmosphere with searing intensity. Id Software's attention to detail is laudable. Sun flares dazzle your eyes, canyon walls reflect the midday sun with jaw-dropping realism, and dust eddies roil and billow in your wake as your vehicle rips through the landscape. It doesn't stop there. Some of the enemies have helmets that get blown off when you score headshots. Enemies reel from such impacts. In Rage, you can see the effects of your withering fire as bandits and mutants get chewed up and armored adversaries whip every which way as each round slams against them. These visual reports make the game one of the more impressive first-person shooters out when it first launched and even today. Rage's AI is a mixed bag. On one side, it's hands down the most convincing AI I've seen to date. Enemies take cover, communicate, swear, throw grenades, cower behind shelter, and even retreat to more advantageous positions while holding their hands above their heads. Minute details like elite troops not running helter-skelter away from you and armored foes reeling from explosives are admirable. Dying enemies even keel over in pain and fire pot shots at you while clutching their torsos. It's enemy behavior like this that lands his first-person shooter truly immersive firefights that few PC games today can match. On the other side of the coin, Rage's AI share the same flaws as that of Fear 3's. They rely too much on cover and most don't really advance on you, nor flank. Most of the factions also don't fire as often as the AI in other games. So really, what good is a Swiss knife approach to the ammo and consumable systems when the game is too easy? Give a game a rocket firing shotgun, medikits and regeneration potions that can be crafted, a pistol that can double as a medium range sniper rifle, and a ridiculously timid AI and you get a character that's well nigh invincible. It's this ridiculously easy difficulty level that's really the most frustrating point about Rage. You can see it claw and hammer away towards being one of the classics that John Carmack and company have created. But sadly, it gets stopped dead in its tracks by a huge wall of design oversight. Even the last firefights and the ending cinematic make up an invective-inducing cliffhanger sequence that's marked by uninspired level and enemy design. As it is, the firefights are still impressive, but they could have been so much more. Let's hope they introduce beefed-up difficulty levels in the sequel. Rage is a rare gem that dazzles you with the bleeding edge technology while hurling you back to the days of yore when blasting everything to bits wasn't saddled down with a bazillion features that aim to please the market. This isn't to say that Rage is not an innovative first person shooter, far from it. The innovation it has flows seamlessly with its core mechanic, planting powerful old school shooter action firmly on the center stage. 
However, several things mar its numerous gameplay facets, preventing this game from reaching the heights others of its id software pedigree have achieved. For my in-depth Rage PC review, see the link I put up on the description box. If you like this video guys, please like it and our subscribe comments would be super appreciated. All these would go a long way in supporting my efforts in producing more videos for you, my fellow PC gamers. Stay cool, stay frost.